Our first brush with anything can shape the way we feel about it for the rest of our lives. My first brush with PC gaming started with me ripping apart my family's compact computer and trying to fit a graphics card inside. It didn't go so well. My first encounter with 3D accelerated graphics started when my mom gave me Star Wars Episode I Racer for the PC on my birthday. Surprisingly, our old K62 based compact computer could play fairly well with its onboard graphics, and I have fond memories of spending hours jetting through the diverse alien landscapes, sometimes head to head with friends. And that, as far as I can tell, is probably when the bug bit. Then, somewhere along the line, I discovered 3D Mark 2000 and could immediately tell how poorly it was running despite not having much experience discerning frame rates. I also remember trying 3D Mark 2001 and being unable to tell that the trees were supposed to be swaying with the animation resembling a series of progression stills. I didn't understand the idea of graphics cards and what made games run faster other than just buying a newer, more expensive computer. But when I did find out sometime in 2002, I somehow convinced my dad to buy a GeForce 4 MX420 as it was one of the cheapest graphics cards available. Of course, I didn't actually know what an AGP slot was or that combat computers at the time rarely included one. Once I opened up our beloved machine and took a look inside, I was dismayed to find out that it wouldn't fit in any of the white slots inside. If only I knew then what I know now about PCI cards. Then things snowballed out of control. Using mysterious mind control powers that I apparently had as a kid, I was able to convince my dad that we needed to upgrade the rest of the computer with a motherboard, which had an AGB slot, and a new processor. We found a combo of the two for under $100, equipped with an Athlon XP 1700 Plus. I still have that same processor to this day. I put the motherboard into the shell of the compact, and for reasons likely related to my inexperience, it wouldn't turn on. I blamed the puny power supply the compact came with, which wasn't even the problem, it turns out, and said we needed a new one of those as well. And while we're at it, a new case. Soon, our cherished family PC was a Frankenstein of new and old parts, and to make matters worse, our old installation of Windows wasn't having any of it. Then the drivers off the CD didn't seem to like the MX420 in our configuration. Apparently, I didn't know about the concept of downloading newer drivers. I was young, inexperienced, stuck, and a little overwhelmed. I give my parents a lot of credit for giving me the free reign to explore my budding interests in computers using their expensive desktop. It took a lot of faith that I'd be able to get it up and running again, eventually. My dad must have sympathized with my frustration because he went with me to Best Buy one night to find a new graphics card to replace the old one that was broken. What we found was this box. I distinctly remember it sitting on the shelf and I'm not exactly sure what it cost at the time, it was under $100. This is the Radeon 7500, though not the exact one I had as a teenager. I consider it to be my first graphics card because it was the first one I actually got working and actually played games on. Eventually, the Athlon XP 1700 Plus computer became my own computer, while my family got a brand new computer for themselves, which was probably their plan B all along. Thus, I had my first gaming PC. The Radeon 7500 was never much to write home about. When it originally released in 2001, it was using yesterday's technology, enhanced and sped up for more modern times. It was essentially the first Radeon with a die shrink, allowing it to clock much higher and tweaked to allow the memory to be clocked separately from the GPU, a limitation of the original. Because of the long-standing support for DirectX 7, probably thanks to NVIDIA continuing to sell such cards well into the early 2000s, the 7500 got me through a few years with a great many games. Lots of games, especially World War II first-person shooters, used the Quake 3 engine, and this card was a great fit for those. I have fond memories playing Wolfenstein Enemy Territory as well as Unreal Tournament 2003 on this card. Even up to 2003, I was using this card to play games like Halo. 
The game supported fix function, but good lord, look at those textures. My friend nicknamed the terrain here AstroTurf. It was on this card I cut my teeth, learning about driver updates, overclocking, running 3 d Mark 2001 to test ability and to try to get a higher score, and what the limitations of certain cards meant for how games looked, particularly without programmable pixel shaders. It's a humble card to be sure, but one I cherish for forming some of my first experiences with PC gaming. Even today, knowing even more about the technology behind it, I can't help but feel some fascination for how it operates. It may not have boasted the most advanced features of its time, but for fixed function hardware, it's actually one of the fastest available and with only two pixel pipes to utilize. For more information on how that works, check out my video on the first Radeon in the link above. The Radeon 7500 probably won't be all that interesting to most people, but it's pretty special to me. And I'm happy to make one of my first videos under Pixel Pipes dedicated to this card. If you like this trip through my early memories with PC gaming, please click the like button and stay tuned for more on the subject of graphics card history. Thanks for watching. This has been Pixel Pipes.